Hey folks, what have we here? Well, this is uh, an old game called Emperor of the Fading Suns. Um, this is the GOG version. And uh, yeah, I'm not actually starting a Let's Play, just to, as a heads up, but this is a very, very, very interesting game. And uh, I, I kind of want to talk about it a little bit because I think the Emperor of the Fading Suns is a game that has a lot of potential. Um, it also was plagued, I guess, just by being a little bit too big for its own uh, own good and it had some kind of bugs and gameplay issues that kind of prevented it from being you know from being the game that it was meant to be by the developers i think it is based on it is based on an old role-playing game or it's based on a role-playing game from the 90s i believe um so it's kind of got this really interesting story and uh, i'm just going to race through the the starting options you can pause and have a look at all this stuff if you want to um but yeah, like this is a 4x strategy game and it's it's on a really really big scale. It's like huge. I'm trying to think what I want for my first I think parapsychology is a good one to take at the start. Um Anyway, actually guys, I'm just going to turn this music down in my own ears because it's really really loud. Okay, so this is a really really cool game, right? Um the way this game works is that you can actually it's played out on in, in this galaxy like this look so you've got multiple planets and each one of these planets you can see has actually has a try to remember how you get in here now uh, there we go each one of these planets has its own map so like a civ style map look it's a hex map so and you can fight over all of these different planets and so it's not it's quite a big game <laughs> so you like you've got like i don't know i think it's like 30 planets and i, I you, you at, at the start of the game you can't actually see all of them some of them are some of them are kind of like locked off from you in fact most of them are you will have access to a couple of planets because depending on which house you choose at the start of the game will di dictate where you you know where you've got access to we've got kish we, we've actually got a fleet over kish here look so you, this is a really cool game you've got fleet action so you can fight in um you can fight fleet battles outside of planets. You can actually bombard planets as well. Let me just see if we can remember how to do this. Oh, no, there we are. Sorry. How do we bombard again? I, by the way, I've not played this in ages, and I never really got very far with it. Here we go. Look, so we can click on an attack, or we can land. So you can actually land, uh, land troops on. If you go to attack... Oh, someone in your group cannot bombard. Hold on. Let's remind myself which one. There we go. Yeah, so you can you can actually uh, you can actually bombard hexes. So if we um, like, for example, you must target an enemy st city or stack. So we could bombard this. Look, defender has hidden units, and this is showing you what's on the planet. And look, we've actually we're actually damaging these units now. So there was a, a unit of armor here, some tanks, and you can go bombard again. No, we didn't hit anything that time. So, uh, but this is really cool because um, it actually gives you a little bit of recon on the planet as well when you do this. So, now, if we just go over to where we bombarded, it was this well look. Well cities. And, uh, yeah, it, it, this game's really, really cool. So, you'll actually be able to see all the, the rebels that are holding these now. Because this planet Kish is this one of the planets that we actually, we're actually holding. You know, it's one of ours. Um... So yeah, you, you kind of it's like a forex game, and you have to kind of explore and you know do the usual forex stuff on each planet in order to get the resources you need in order to build like this kind of galactic empire, so you can defeat the enemies. But it's it's also got because it's based on a role playing game, it's got some really really interesting features. Um, you know, like for example, it's got a very interesting way of a, a very interesting victory condition. So let me see if I can find. I think it's on this planet here. This is like the, so th this is kind of like a, a neutral sort of planet where the, where the sort of galactic s sort of, where all the houses kind of congregate. And um, it's kind of, sh I believe it's shared, you've, you've all got a, a force on here and it's kind of shared between all the different houses. So no one has access to it. And the a aim of the game is to become the galactic emperor, but you don't do it necessarily by conquest. You have these, um, I don't know where they are actually, whether I've got them, or which, whether they'll be on Kish somewhere. Um, let's just have a look. The church. So we've got a, speci a specific unit anyway. Here we are, look. So we get these things here. These are the scepters. And each one of these scepters gives you a vote in the in a kind of galactic council vote, I guess. And so what 
everybody's got a share of these and the idea is you want you want to be taking these from your opponents that you can trade them um you can you can actually trade them with your opponents in diplomacy so if you go to the diplomacy you could like say let's say i want to talk to lucinda from house hazard i could say to her all right i want um votes at the next election for example or you have a look declaration of war and another usual alliance stuff right you can ask for money and but i believe that you can also trade those those um scepters so you can take them by force so you could actually go and invade one of your neighbors and take the scepters by force and that will give you more galactic influence and when you've got enough of these basically you can win the game but obviously you don't want to lose them you've also got these you've also got these kind of noble units uh let's have a look here so you've got nobles and nobles are an important unit um these if you lose all of your nobles you also lose the game so you have to keep these guys like safe basically but they're also really really good in battle so they they give bonuses to your armies it's just really really cool this game it's it had so many great ideas why are you talking about this old game now ben well um one it had a release on gog i can't remember what it was it might have been about a year ago now so um it might be less than a year i forget how, how long ago it was but finally this game is playable it it, it was technically abandoned where and it didn't work very well on modern computers. Now Gog, uh, Gog have kind of like fixed it up, or the developers have fixed it up for Gog. Even more amazingly, though, the original developers, or at least some of the original developers, I think, have actually been working on a new patch for this game, and it's it's due to come out in, I think, in a matter of weeks or months. I don't know exactly when, but it's supposed to be third quarter, um, 2022. And this new patch, basically, uh, it was designed to modernize the game a little bit so that modders can play it but can make better mods for it um, as a consequence they've kind of gone through and added loads of new stuff they've also for those of you not interested in mods they've also made some changes to the base game just to make it play better this game had some fatal flaws and one of them was that the ai tended to spam out cities because cities are quite cheap to make with your engineers and they tended to spam them out to the point where the game stopped being playable because <laughs> computers just couldn't run the uh, you know the uh, I think they started running out of RAM and all sorts of weird things. I, I can't. I, I don't know exactly what was going. Te you know, on, going on technically, but it was something like that anyway. So this game had great potential, and it's still got a, a fairly. It's got a small but dedicated multiplayer scene, I'd say. And so it is a very, 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 very fun multiplayer game. Apparently, it's also quite a long game. I think it's long, like Dominion's is. You know, it's one. It's going to be one of those games that's quite long. However. I think that this new update that they've come out with, which is ba they basically ported it over to Visual Studio or something. So they've, they've basically updated this game, you know, so that the the, the engine behind it is much more modern. <laughs> if Visual Studio, I think it's Visual Studio they're using. Um, but they basically made it so that this game now will be a lot easier to access with modders. They've added loads of stuff to the units. Like, for example, we're looking at this Militia Legion here, but they've added like a gold cost, one of the examples. And... In the base game, pretty much nothing costs Firebirds. Firebirds is the currency in the game. So pretty much nothing costs Firebirds, really. But they've added it for modders because modders like to do cool stuff like that. And, you know, it's it, it, they've just added loads of things that to basically make this game much easier for people to make content for. And, it, um, you know, there's there's all sorts of mods for, the, for this base game even before this new patch comes out. I wasn't that keen on any of them, actually. I've got to be honest with you. I... I I don't know, I felt they kind of changed the base game too much without really fixing too much, I guess. Anyway, in the description of this video is a link to an Explorminate article by Oliver Mesmorki. He did a really, really cool, uh, he called it uh, excavation <laughs> of this game. So he went he went and looked at this game and he was utterly delighted with it, uh, even though that you know it kind of has problems. And he was using the reality mod, which is one of the better mods, I'd say, for the game. And uh, yeah, I don't know... A huge amount of this game because I've never played it all the way through. I've probably played about 20, 30 turns of it. I'd say I think I persisted with it about that long. And I looked at it and I thought, this is great, but it kind of needs something. And I believe from what I was looking at on the videos from the developers who are currently working on this to kind of, you know, to release this new version, it's looking really, really cool. And I think if they can, if the little changes that they're making to the base game, even without modding, uh, they are they are significant enough that it actually makes it so that the game should be really good fun to play in single player. And I would love to play this because I think that this is, I mean, look at it. You've got 
it's not I, I don't like things just for the sake of being large right this is not why I like it. it it's not just that this game's got some cool stuff right for example there's a there's a church in the game and the the church like so technology is kind of pres they, they prescribe certain ch technology so if you've got like let's say that they don't like biotechnology for, for whatever reason uh, you can you can research that in your in your labs right but if you then uh, if the church turn up and they decide, hang on a minute, you've got this prescribed technology, you're not allowed to have this, they'll actually turn up with a fleet and bomb your lab. <laughs> They're like, no, you can't do that. So there's, you have to play diplomacy with the church, and you can actually go and talk to the church and say, hey, you know, I, I want you to be friends with us. And, um, you know, you've got all these different, these are all, these are all different section, uh, factions within the church, by the way. You can kind of curry favour with the church by giving them money, or you can give them, you can ask for votes. Uh, look here, prescribe tech. So you can ask them to prescribe certain technologies. Like if your if your opponents have got technology that you can't get or you haven't got, and you want the you want that to be something they can't use, you can just prescribe that technology. And then you can sick the church on your enemies. I mean, we don't get this in modern forex games, man. Like this is like um, this is something completely different. Okay, um, there's also this alien race who um, are. Because it, it's not just all humans. There's, there's an alien. Fa there's some alien factions in it as well. There is a, a, there is a alien faction, and these guys will. Um, you can sell them information. They're obviously trying to take over the galaxy too. Um, here's Holy Terror. So I think this is Earth. I don't. I think. Yeah, we can't. We can't see anything on here yet. But uh, I don't know. I might be able to see it if I move a. If I move a fleet over. Oops. Sorry. Forgive me, guys. I, it's been a while since I played this. But let, let's let's try and move a fleet over to Holy Terror and see if we can. Yeah. Okay, so we, we moved actually as far as Criticorum here. And we can now actually see Criticorum, look. So we've got, an, we've got a whole other map here. Um, why would you want a game that, this, that is this big? Well, this game has got some really, really cool features. For example, all of your... Obviously, everything takes resources to build and maintain. Now, you're not going to find all those resources on your own planets. And at the start of the game, everywhere is really, really underdeveloped. So not only do you have to explore, expand, exterminate, etc. You know, exploit all of your existing uh, planets. You have to explore new ones as well. And so that you can get up an industry big enough to form... You know, to start building ships, build, build units. It's got ground combat... Um, you know, it's got all the sort of normal like terrain stuff. It's got, it's just really, really cool. It's it's a big, big game, super complex. Um, it's not quite on the level of Shadow Empire complex. Uh, uh, in fact, it's not that complex, but it's um, it's tighter in a sense. It's it's actually quite a good game. The uh, the yeah, like I say, the only issues with it really were it was just difficult to play because of the because uh, of the kind of problems with the AI. And I'm I'm hoping that this new that this new patch is going to fix it. So. Um, they, the developers seem confident that they, they're, they're saying like this is a big patch. This is not just like a little update. This is a whole overhaul of the of the graphical en uh, sorry of the game engine to enable it to be played better, basically. So this should really rejuvenate this game, and I'm 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 praying that they can do a really good job of it. And I was actually watching the developers play it a little bit. They did a they did a couple of Twitch streams where they were playing it for a few hours, and I probably watched about an hour of it. So maybe about forty minutes. And I was really impressed with what I saw. It just looks... There, there's so much... Honestly, there's so much to this game. Anyway, I'm not going to wax lyrical about this for too long. I just thought I'd show you this off. And uh, this is the old version, by the way. So this is not the new beta version. Look at this. This is, the, this is one of the planets. So if you can imagine, you know, you might land here at the same sort of time as your your rivals. And then you've got to fight a ground war here, as well as an air war. As, you know, like a, an orbital war. So you'll be... You know, you might have enemy ships and you have to fight the enemy ships in orbit and then when you've won then you get to you know bombard their forces and they'll be hiding out in these buildings and then you've got to land your troops and try and kill their nobles and steal all their scepters and <laughs> there's also a mode in it where all of your there's two different modes and one of the modes all of your resources are just shared in a kind of galactic pool like they are normally in your standard 4x game so if you want f uh, access to food, you don't have to grow it on Kish, right? It just it is grown on Kish here, and then let's say you need it in, you know, you need it in Criticorum, then it will automatically be shared here, and this is how it's working. But you can actually set the game so that you have to manually transfer all your supplies, which means you can supply raid enemies, so you can go and steal their supplies from planets, so you can be like, like play like a pirate sort of way, you know, like stealing what you need. Uh, this is honestly right. Th th this has got ideas in it that other 4x games really 
never kind of did. And yes, it's kind of big and unwieldy, and it, I think apparently it takes a very long time to play. But I mean, look, oh, damn it, I play War in the East. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's I, you know, I play some big, big war games. It's not going to be any longer than those. In fact, I, I, I doubt it'll be as long as War in the East. So I just think that uh, this is something that I'm really excited for. If you are interested, let me know because when the patch drops, I'm going to have a look at it. And if it looks like it's going to be something that would be fun to play, and I'm pretty sure it will be, then I'd like to do a let's play of it on this channel, I think, because I might even do it on Explorminate. I've not done any uh, content on Explorminate for a bit. So, um, yeah, if you want to see this, please drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about, uh, you know, Emperor of the Fading Suns, this game. Go and go and read Oliver's article on it and then go and check out some videos. Um, I'll probably put a link up to the Twitch Twitch streams or to the YouTube recordings of the Twitch streams <laughs> that the developers did. And then you can go and have a look at it yourself and you can tell me what you think. And, you know, do you think this is something that you would like to see on the channel? Because I think I'd like to play it. I really do. I think this would be really, really cool. I haven't really got time for multiplayer games at the moment. And the last Dominions game I played kind of burned me out, I've got to be honest. <laughs> and I'm playing a Shadow Empire multiplayer game right as we speak as well, and it's taking so long. So I, I don't think I'm really up for playing a multiplayer game of this. Um... Not unless I could, I don't know. Not unless it was very, very sort of slow paced and I've just got too much on. But um, certainly as a single player game, I would like to explore it and just see how it works. Okay, folks, that is it. I, uh, I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.